So welcome to the class on jQuery, brought to you by Creative Online School. My name is Keith Hearn, and I will be your web instructor for this course. Um, I've been working with students for over 20 years doing web development, and I've trained hundreds of students in classrooms and online in all different things, both graphic design and web design, and I'm really excited to get into jQuery. So jQuery is basically a framework, a pre-written JavaScript. What that means is it's one big file that allows you to do all sorts of things that normally you would have had to have uh, written by hand in JavaScript itself. So saving us a ton of time and a ton of effort to have to learn how to do all this stuff. Instead, it's all just pre-compiled into one big file that you can access through jQuery and we can do all sorts of cool things with it. So what does jQuery do exactly? Well, it helps deal with browser differences. So it can help uh, alleviate some of the issues that you can have with cross-browser issues going from maybe like Internet Explorer to Firefox to Safari to Chrome and things like that. It can also help simplify common tasks that you may run across while you're doing web stuff. It also really helps reduce web code. Now, it's one of the big things that search engines rank websites on these days is speed. So if you had a whole bunch of little JavaScript pieces of code in your file, it would take the search engines a lot longer to have to read through, therefore slowing your site down, therefore ranking your site lower, where jQuery comes into play and it gives one big file that it can just read right through, speeding up your website. Some common tasks that you can do with jQuery are things like creating an event, or where an app retrieves data from a page that's based on that event, or manipulate data on the page. Basically what we're going to be using it for is animation and customizing stuff on a web page itself. There's all sorts of things you can do with it. I want to get into more of the things that's going to be more practical for that most people will be using jQuery for, and we're going to get into several different projects using it. So again, some of the things that you can use jQuery for is things like HTML manipulation and CSS manipulation and animation and AJAX, things like that. Uh, it may sound a little bit scary right now, but it's really not that big of a deal. We will be doing programming in here, and you will see all sorts of cool things that you can do with it. What I would suggest is having at least a little bit of a background in HTML and CSS before you get started with this course. Uh, if you don't have that already, go ahead and go over to creativeonlineschool.com and check out some of the other great videos we have on those subjects on there. If you are up to speed, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Like I said in the last video, I definitely suggest that you have some kind of HTML and CSS background before starting this class. And if you do, chances are you already have some kind of a favorite software that you use to edit your HTML files and things like that. I'm gonna run through those, the kind of my primary ones real quick. Uh, a lot of people like to use brackets.io. I love that program, it's really good. It's a free download, it has a lot of cool extensions that you can uh, used to add to your website to add a lot of cool functionality um, in the editing mode. Great stuff. Um, Sublime Text, another great, great HTML editing program that you can use to easily edit things like jQuery and CSS and everything else that we're going to be doing in this class. Uh, personally, though, I'm going to be using Dreamweaver just, just because it's what I'm more used to using, uh, but you can use any of these things. I've also shown that you can use a uh, regular text editor, things like that. Um, doesn't really matter, but as we start to get into some of these types of things with jQuery, it's going to be a lot more beneficial to have a real editing program. Uh, again, there's other ones that are out there, but as you can see just in this little uh, preview that they're doing here, you can see how the code changes different colors when there's different things that it's highlighting. And again, as we get into this jQuery and CS, we're combining CSS and HTML, it's going to be a little bit more important. It's going to make your job a lot easier to understand the code if you can actually see those kinds of things. So that's what I recommend. So let's go ahead and get started by downloading jQuery. So all we need to do is go to the website jQuery.com and I go forward slash download, or you can just click on the download button if you just go to jQuery.com. And here they're going to have the most recent version of jQuery here. Um, similar to Bootstrap, if you've taken that class, you will see that you can uh, install it different ways using the command line and downloading it and linking to it, things like that. Um, what we're going to do for this class is just go ahead and download the most recent version. Now, as with anything, they seem to have several different versions to make things a little bit more complicated than it needs to be. But what we're going to do is we're going to use the compressed version of jQuery. 
can the most recent version is 3.3.1 but uh, it really doesn't matter what we're going to be learning is going to be compliant across uh, a lot of the future updates as well so don't worry too much about that if you're seeing a more recent version um, again we're going to be using the compressed version which that's going to run a lot faster than it would if you were to use the uncompressed version and basically the compressed version does not allow you to make edits to the jQuery file which Really, there's no need to make any kind of edits to it. We're not going to be doing that kind of stuff. We're going to be using the jQuery library to build applications within our website. Now, again, if you want to do the uncompressed version, you could make changes to it, and it's going to run a little bit slower. Um, and then there's, again, a couple different options outside of that that we're not going to worry too much about. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the download compressed version, and I'm going to say right to my desktop, jQuery. You can see the file name right there, and I'm going to save it. And in the next class, we're going to go ahead and add the jQuery script to a web page and go ahead and get started. All right, so in the last class, we went ahead and downloaded the jQuery file. Now we're going to create our basically kind of our structure of our website just to keep this real simple here. I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm going to create a new folder here on my desktop. I'm going to call this jQuery just for now. This will be my jQuery. I actually just call it jQuery class so we're not confused. And you can name it whatever you want. All right, so within there, I have nothing currently. I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it JS. It's pretty common to have all of your JavaScript files in a folder, something like jQuery, or excuse me, JS, or JavaScript, something like that. Um, I prefer just to use JS. And if I were to have more than one, uh, maybe if I had a custom scripts file for JavaScript uh, extras outside of jQuery, or maybe other things that I needed to add to it that were already pre written, uh, there are a lot of extra jQuery classes that you can add on later on. We're not going to get into that at the moment. Right now, we just have our JS file. And I'm going to take the jQuery file I downloaded, the version 3.3.1, and I'm just going to drag and drop it right into my folder here. Now, again, just for simplicity, what I like to do is just rename that, get rid of this big, long name, just call it just jQuery. All right, so my file structure is jQuery class folder here, and within here I'm going to have all my working files in my JS. I'm going to have that. Um, Again, it's kind of nice to break this up like this. If I had multiple files in here, I can also create a CSS file a folder with all my CSS files within it. It just makes it a lot easier and a lot cleaner. This is the way a lot of developers do it, so it may be easy to see or pass along to other people, or if you were to pick it up, you would be used to seeing this kind of structure here. So, All right, so within my HTML editing program, again, you can use any of those ones that I recommend or any other ones. Uh, I will be using Dreamweaver here, and I'm just going to create a basic HTML document. I'm going to show you how to link to your JavaScript file. All right, so Dreamweaver shows both split uh, design and uh, code view right here. I'm going to switch just to code view so we can see this. So just like with CSS, what we do is we add the JavaScript. We link to it within the head of our document here. So I'm going to just kind of mouse over a little bit. And before the head closes here, I'm going to add a script tag that's going to pull in my JavaScript file. So I'll say script source equals, and remember the path to my file, we created a folder called JS, and then within there we called it just jQuery. We renamed it jQuery.js. Make sure you get that full extension on there. And I close that out, and Dreamweaver went ahead and closed out that script right there for me. That's all I need to do. This is not like HTML, so there's nothing that's going to be in the body of that. I just need to close that script tag out right there. And I'm going to save my file. I'm just going to call this index, and I'm going to go back to my desktop. And within the jQuery class folder, I'm going to have it right here. And I'll hit save. All right, now I'm going to close it out. I'm going to open up my browser. You can use whichever browser you want to use here. And I'm going to take that index file and just drag it right to my browser so I can pull it up. I want to just make sure that this is linked correctly. So what I'd like to do here is within the, um, again, you're not really seeing anything going on here because we don't have anything working right now. We've just linked to the file. I can go to View, Developer, View Source. And you can see that this is the code that makes up my page so far. I've got this js.jQuery. 
And if I click on that, you can see that it pulls up all this crazy, crazy, crazy code. This is jQuery. Nothing in here that you need to be understanding or seeing in here that looks in any way familiar, hopefully. Uh, just because this is all pre-written, nothing you need to do. So all as long as I am seeing that, I know that this is linked properly. So in the next couple classes, when we start linking to it, it's going to make a lot more sense and we'll know it's working. If you're not seeing this, make sure that your file structure is set up properly. Again, I've got my index file here and within the JS folder, I've got jQuery.js. A lot of times it's either a path issue if you're not seeing that code. Um, or it's a naming issue. So make sure it's spelled correctly, both the folder and the file, as well as where your index file is at compared to where everything else is. All right, so let's go ahead and dive right into writing some jQuery code. I have my index file open right here. And we went ahead in the last class and added the link to the jQuery, and we made sure that that worked within a browser. We tested all that out. So now that I have the library, jQuery is a library, and now that we have that added here, we can go ahead and start. Now we can go ahead and connect to it by adding some scripting code in here. So let's go ahead and get started. All I have to do is open up a tag and say script. All right, that's going to open and close. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of give myself a little bit of space here so I can type in between there. Now, again, this was just linking to the jQuery. Now we create a new script to actually write some kind of a function within here. So the way you write jQuery is you start out by adding a dollar sign. Now that allows you to link to the different things within there. So we add the dollar sign. That's how we reference the jQuery code in there. Now what we do is we open up a set of parentheses and quotes. This is how we target our selector. We add the, again, the open and closing parentheses and the open and closing quotes in here. And within there is where we start to say what we're gonna target. We're gonna target our document, the whole document. We're gonna target that whole thing. Um, I could also put in there very specific things within CSS or different things. We're gonna see how we target all that stuff later on. But right now I just wanna target the entire document. So now after that, I'm gonna say ready. Now this is a function. This is, says when this is ready, this is what is going to happen. So we say ready, and then we open up another set of parentheses, and we say function. Now this is a callback function that is going to allow us to do other things. So just uh, bear with me on this one. We're gonna open and close our parentheses, and we're going to open and close, whoops, we're gonna open and close a set of curly brackets right there. All right, so I've typed that out between the curly brackets right there. I'm gonna place my cursor so you can see it's blinking right there. I'm gonna hit return a couple of times. Now within here, we're gonna add another selector. Okay, we added the first one up here. Now I'm gonna do a, another dollar sign. And within there, I'm gonna say open quote, I'm gonna say body. All right, so what we've done so far is we've said, okay, within the document, once it's ready, start this function here. This is the event handler up here, and we're gonna say make sure that all this stuff is ready and then target the body. All right, so now what I wanna do, and now that I've written all this to say when the document starts, once that's ready within the body, now what I wanna do, I want to do, in this case, I want to append. That means to add to. I'm gonna say append. I'm gonna open up a new set of parentheses here and a new set of quotes. What I want to append to the body is I could put anything in here that I wanted to. I could add an image, I could add text, I could do whatever I wanted to. In this case, I'm going to do something very simple. I just want to add a little bit of HTML code. I'm going to say H1, I love jQuery. And just like with regular HTML, I'm going to go ahead and close that out. And do is I need to add a semicolon right there so I know that that's all done. So if you were adding this with regular JavaScript, this would take a lot more code than this. This is what's really great. If you are not familiar with just writing regular JavaScript, you would not appreciate this as much. But with this very simple little function right here, I'm able to add this text to the body of my document. 
I'm just gonna close up that little bit of room right there. Now, one last thing I gotta do is just like with everything else, HTML, jQuery, CSS, I need to make sure that I'm always closing things out properly. So I have that little semicolon I needed to add right down there. Now that I've got that in there, let's go ahead and save our document. And we'll come back to our HTML document here. See right now I'm still looking at the view source code up here. Now this was our file before, regular old index.html. I'm gonna hit refresh right there. And you can see that my text is put right into the document. I'm gonna uh, control click or you can hit right click, whatever, and say inspect. And you can see that it added that dynamically right into the document. So you can start to see, hopefully, that the power of jQuery right here, I can just add information right into my document uh, wherever I want to. I can start to really target different things in here. I could target uh, CSS, ID areas, uh, different things like that. I could switch things up on the go. It makes this stuff very powerful and opens up a lot of doors for you to do some really cool things that you'll be seeing in future classes here. All right, so in the last video, we got our feet wet and started typing some jQuery in here. Hopefully that made perfect sense, clear as mud, right? So what we're gonna do now is try to make it make a little bit more sense and show it as a little bit more practical of a uh, exercise here. What I'm gonna do is we're gonna work on selectors and kind of like filters too here. So I'm gonna save this as a new document so we can come back to it if we want to. I'm gonna say save as, I'm gonna say selector. Just gonna name it that for right now, again, just to kind of keep this separate here. And the last time we said, when the document itself loads, do something here. So instead of doing this, <clears throat> instead of just loading this information right here, I'm gonna cut that out of there. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the body of my document. So maybe I already have this H1 title in here, and maybe I just wanted to do some cool styling with it, uh, unique within jQuery itself. Now again, we talked about the different things that jQuery can do, and one of the things is altering both HTML and CSS and things like that. So let's see how we can use jQuery to edit that CSS. Now we're gonna use still start out with the selector of the dollar sign right here. We're gonna open and close pair of parentheses and quotes. But instead of saying the entire body, don't append something to the body, I wanna just alter just the H1 tag there. So again, this could be any kind of CSS or HTML element right here. And instead of appending, I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of that whole thing right there. What I'm going to say is uh, target the H1 tag right here, and I want to use CSS. All right. So again, H1, CSS. And what we can do now is basically just add like we would with regular CSS within here. Now, maybe what I wanna do is add a, I don't know, border to it. So we'll open a pair of quotes right here and I'll say border. And now we separate the, now we separate the property with a value here by adding that little comma right there. So the property is border and the value is going to be a one pixel solid. Um, I don't know, let's say dotted green border right there. So we should be saying as soon as the document loads here, once it's ready, take anything with an H1 tag, apply some CSS to it, and in that case, border one pixel dotted green. Now, if you were to write this as just CSS, uh, it would look very much like this. It would be H1 and then open and close the curly brackets and then it would say border colon one pixel dotted green. So it'd be just like that, but we're adding it within the jQuery syntax right here. So I'm gonna save this document and remember to grab the selectors HTML file that we just created. I drag that right onto a browser and you can see, I'm gonna close that editor out right there see that it did add a dotted green border all the way around my h1 tag up here so i could just as easily come back and say let's make that a uh, three pixel solid border i'm going to save that come back to my browser and that is added up there pretty cool huh so now I did say we're going to be doing both selectors and filters in here. So let me show you what I mean by filter. So let's say we've got, I don't know, maybe we've got a couple H1 tags in here. 
And let's just, I don't know, just go ahead and add a one, a two, a three after it, just so I can see that the difference is here. So maybe we've got three H1 tags in here. Maybe you don't want them all to have this basic layout here. So what I can do is add a filter right in here to the H1, and I can say colon first. All right, so what that's going to do, I'm going to just change it up a little bit here, say two pixel red just so I can see that's changed and I'm targeting just the first h1 tag within here so if I save that and come back to my browser I can hit refresh you can see I've added one two and three and that is going to affect just the first one not all three of them um, I could also just as easily say last come back and refresh my document and now it's targeting just the last h1 tag within here so a lot of cool things you can do. You're hopefully just starting to uh, get the idea of what you can do with here. You've only scratched the surface though because there's so many more cool things that we're going to be doing in future videos. All right, so in the last video we went ahead and saw how jQuery can target a CSS class. Um, this H1, you know, this could just as easily be a, you know, uh, our own class of like um, dot uh, copy, um, or it could be targeting an ID of header new, something like that. You can add it either way. Um, but now if we want to actually target an area within the page and we can add content to it dynamically, what we're going to do is do a replace here. So what I'm going to show you is we're going to actually pick up on a lot of this current code right here, but I'm going to create a new document and just going to call this replace. So hopefully you continue to see some of the power of jQuery and some of the things that you can do and hopefully it gets some ideas of different ways that you can use jQuery within your document. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the h1 tags down here. I don't need that. But what I do want to do is create a new div class. Um, and this is where having that HTML and CSS background, I don't have time to really go in and teach you how to do these div tags. So hopefully you already understand what those are. Um, if not, again, go back and check out some of the other great classes. But for right now, we're going to create this new div. And we're going to create an area in here. I'm just going to call this um, the text box. All right, so I get a div ID of text box. And then within there, whoops, helps if I wrote it right, div ID equals text box. Now I've got this text box area up in here. And let's do something real quick. I'm going to go to, um, just grab a little bit of uh, lorem ipsum copy here. All right. So I'm going to copy that code, text, whatever, and I'm going to place that in here. So if you're familiar with HTML and the way CSS works, you'll know that this, if I were to save this right now, this copy would come into, well, let's go ahead and just uh, save it so we can take a look at it here. I'm going to grab my new document here. This was called Replace. And you can see that it's got my lorem ipsum copy in there just as it should. So we're not really styling because I haven't created any styles for it yet. I'm just targeting this ID of text box and added some copy to it. So let's come back up to our document up here. And within here, what I'm going to do is create something new here. I'm going to create something that's called a variable. Now, again, if you're familiar with CSS, this should be um, kind of familiar. It works the same way as creating a class or an ID is. What we do is, but with JavaScript, we call it a variable. So we use VAR, just say that. And that is creating a piece of code that we can reuse, but we get to name it. We can call it whatever we want here. So within there, I'm just going to create, because I'm replacing this copy here, I'm going to say um, create a new variable of, uh, let's say, new text. All right? So anywhere that I put this new text, I can apply some kind of JavaScript or jQuery information to it. So, so again, my variable is new text, and that's going to be a container for all different information that we add to it here. And I'm going to say that new text is equal to, I'm going to use a jQuery dollar sign right there, and I'm going to open and close a paragraph, open and close a quote, parenthesis, excuse me, not paragraph, uh, quote, and within there, I'm going to say HTML paragraph. Anything within here is the string within the variable, and that P is going to say, what I'm going to make it say is replace anything within this paragraph within this div area right here. Now, if this were just a regular P, 
this would be allowing me to keep this copy and add what I'm going to add here, but I'll show you kind of what that means here in a second. So we're saying variable new text is equal to, in jQuery, we're going to say this new paragraph tag. I'm going to close it out with a whoops, semicolon, and hit return a couple times, and then I'm going to say this new text. You can see actually with the, a lot of these HTML editors will actually pick up the fact that you created this new variable and allow you to reuse it right there. So I'm going to say new paragraph, and just like what we did a couple videos ago, I'm going to say append. All right. And within there, I'm going to add some copy that I want to replace all this information down here with. And um, I can do whatever I want with it. I can add, uh, whoops, I can add HTML tags. So I can say h1, um, I just replaced something. And I got to close out that h1 tag up there. And what I should be doing is now that I add this new text, I'm going to append add this h1 tag right here. And it should hopefully be getting rid of that here. Now, as of right now, I really haven't targeted this area with my jQuery, so I need to do that next. So I'm going to just replace what I've kind of currently wrote right here. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of delete that. And I'll say, uh, if I were to rewrite it, I'd have the dollar sign right there and then the quotes. And now, I, now here's where I want to target. I'm going to copy just so I have it exactly written. Make sure I've got that camel case, uh, uppercase B right there. I'll say text box. Now a slightly new piece of uh, jQuery here for you. I'm going to say after that box, I'm going to say HTML. Now what that's going to let me do is target this HTML with this P tag up here. And I will say, I'm going to put my variable in there. What is it that I'm going to do? I'm going to append this new text within this text box ID. All right, does that make sense so far? So I've got this text box right down here. And I'm going to say within there, place this new text variable. And I should be replacing it with that. So I'm going to hit save. Now look, I'm not deleting this copy in here. I've still got this copy in here, this lorem ipsum. This is how it displayed before. Now if I hit refresh, oh, that's why. Looks like I forgot to add a little semicolon there. Do not forget to do that. Actually, right up here too. And save that. Come on back. So that didn't replace up there, so I must have something going on in my document here. Yeah, I'm a big dummy. You don't put the ID and the pound down there, get rid of the pound sign, and now it should just be ID equals text box. That looks good, looks good. Let's save that, come back, and let's hit refresh up here. There you go. So I just replaced something. So that becomes very powerful by being able to target certain ID areas within your page or your document and be able to replace with certain text. This could, become, uh, this could be very beneficial when it comes to maybe wanting to display certain text on a mobile device as opposed to the desktop or different things like that. Maybe you don't want to get rid of the actual document text, but just want to replace it temporarily. Um, all different uses for it. So we are just getting started and there's going to be some really cool things ahead here. So something else that we can do with jQuery and JavaScript basically as itself is do something called events. Now events are anything that you do with it, where you interact with a browser. This could be as you mouse over a button, it changes. Um, as you mouse, if you click it, it does something. Um, and just as you move your cursor over things, all different things like that are events or things that happen within the browser window. So what we wanna do is create some of those events using jQuery. So I'm going to use my last document, but I'm going to rename it here. I'm just going to call it events. Save it in the same location here. I'm going to get rid of a bunch of these old documents real quick. And uh, still using the JavaScript up there. Still using the first document ready function up here. I'm going to get rid of the rest of the stuff in between here. Now, I am going to... Uh, let's keep this text box area down here, but instead of using jQuery to stylize it, I'm going to create just a little bit of basic CSS here. And I'm going to target that ID just real quick. I'm going to say text box. I'm going to open and close that sucker. 
And I'm going to say width, I'll uh, say 250 pixels maybe, and give it a height. So I want to create a button here, basically is what I'm doing. So height equals 250. You know, in fact, let's make it even smaller here. Just take it down a little bit because it's a button. It's not a big old honking area there. And then maybe just give it a um, uh, border one pixel solid black and maybe give it a background color of um, Alice Bloom, sure, whatever. Okay, so we've got that styled down there. I got my style sheet. Okay, so the script is going on up here. We're going to continue writing within here. So what I'm going to do is within the document, so after the document is looked at and everything is ready, then we can proceed with this. We're going to create a new selector right there, and this time we are going to create uh, one that targets our text box. So we'll say uh, dollar sign, or excuse me, pound sign, text box. And what I want to do is give it an on event. Now, if you've done anything with like Photoshop where you can create these kind of like on mouse over events, um, or just done a regular JavaScript before, uh, it's very, very simple. We just say we target that text box, boom, text box right down there. And we say on, and we tell it what to do as somebody is on it. So we'll say on click event, that is the event right there. We say comma and say when mouse is clicked, and we're going to close it out with a semicolon. So the text box, when somebody clicks it, when the mouse is clicked, and then we will also do another one that says, uh, we're targeting the same box here, so we'll say text box again. And again, very similar to this top one up here. Oops, I forgot to put my pound sign there, so the ID. Now again, we'll say on, and in another event, it says um, mouse leave. Whoops, I'm thinking of old action script days there. Mouse leave, all lowercase there. Uh, end of quotes, comma, we'll say when mouse leaves, camel case, so when mouse leaves, uh, end paren, uh, semicolon there. Now what we're going to do is, so we've got those two events that we just created up there. So once somebody clicks it and when somebody mouse leaves that area right there, what we're going to do is create a function that says what to happen when something when those two events happen. So we'll say the function, and we'll do the first one, when mouse is clicked. So I'm just going to copy and paste that there so I have the exact same spelling. Open and close parens, uh, open curly bracket there. I'll hit return a couple times. So within that curly bracket, we can say what the function is when the mouse is clicked. And again, we'll target it using our jQuery and just like above, we will say text box. We're going to change the HTML in it. And we will say, open and close our parentheses, open and close a pair of quotes. Um, let's do, uh, and, ah, ah, stop that, stop that. We'll do, stick with our H1 tag up here and say, you clicked me. Now that's the actual HTML code that's going to put in the text box div using HTML. You clicked me, close that out, and at the end there we'll close it out with a semicolon, and we've got a closing curly bracket right there. So again, targeting this on click event when mouse is clicked, the function when mouse is clicked, replace the HTML with h1 you clicked me. Now what we're going to do is do one for the mouse leave event. I'm just going to copy that because there's a lot of code there that we can copy and paste from. And we can say when the mouse leaves. So the new function when the mouse leaves, what do we want to do when that happens here? We're still targeting that text box. We're still using HTML. And you can say, where are you going? All right, now it's not proper English there, where are you going? 
uh, close out that curly bracket, same, the rest of this code is all the same down here. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this lorem ipsum copy down here. All right, so I just have an empty text box ID. Again, we picked up on the last document that we were working in. If not, you can go ahead and type that ID out right now. Um, our text box should be about this width, this height, have this border here, this background color, and these two functions are in place. Everything looks good, but let's go ahead and test it out. Uh, again, I have a new file called events.html. I'll save that, come back to my file here, open this one up, box there. Now if I mouse over it, you can see it says, where are you going? And if I click it, you clicked me. I mouse out again, where are you going? Come back over, click again, you clicked me. And a lot of cool things you can do using jQuery and events. All right, continuing to on some really cool, fun stuff here using jQuery. So I've got my last file here, events. I'm going to save this, and I'm going to call this one hide show. Show hide, whatever. Hide show, save that into my document there. And I'm going to go ahead and, yeah, I'm just going to get rid of all this information right here from the last file. In fact, we can go ahead and, well, we can keep the text box area here. Um, that's fine for right now. So let's go ahead and keep that. It's a very cool one because this is actually something I use in the real world uh, quite a bit. Uh, quite a bit. I, I've used it a decent number of times on websites before and you've probably seen it before where you can actually click to show something or hide something. Uh, this would lead into other things like tabs and uh, accordion windows and things like that that you do see a lot on websites. But this is kind of a cool little trick that you can do. What we're going to do is, first of all, let's go ahead and create um, two button areas down here. I'm going to just, just simple text for right now that will allow you to click to show the text or click to hide the text. So I'm going to go ahead and create these two. These are going to be links because you're either actually clicking to create an event to do something. So I'm going to say a href equals, and we can just use the pound sign because it's not actually going anywhere. What we want to do is give it an ID of, let's say show, and say, I'm gonna, within there, I'm going to say click to show. And what I can do is just copy and paste again, just for uh, time's sake. I'll say uh, ID equals, guess what? Hide. Click to hide. All right, very cool. So very simple right there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and go back to Lorem Ipsum here, grab a little bit of copy, grab a copy. I just do. All right, I'm going to come back to here. I'm going to grab a paragraph of copy, and this is what I'm going to show and hide. So within my text box area, I'm going to keep reusing this text box for right now. I'm going to put that first paragraph of copy down there. Now, I said I'm going to keep this text box ID. I don't really care what these look like right now. I'm going to keep those links just as is. But the text box itself, what I want to do is replace all of that because I don't really care about styling on this one. What I'm going to do is just replace that with a very simple CSS tag of display set it to none. So I'm going to make it hide by default. So display none equals don't even show this stuff down here. All right, so that is all summed. In fact, I'm just going to save them and come back over here. I'm going to grab my document and say hide show. Oh, I can already see I got one little error right up there, so I'm glad I checked it first. Ah, it looks like I forgot to close up my click to hide tag right there. Now we're good. All right, I'm going to save that, come back here. Good. Okay, so I got two buttons up here click to show, click to hide. And again, it started out hiding all that text right there. You can see there's nothing to select right there, it's actually hiding it. And what I'm going to do is make it so that when you click on one, click on click to show, it's going to show the text and the other will hide it again. So what I'm going to do is up here, I'm going to keep the same line that we started out with where it says um, when the document is ready, start this function. Add a little bit of space right there. So the first one we're going to do is start our jQuery tag right there with the dollar sign. And I'm going to, just as before, open up a string right there and say target the show, which is what we created down there, and on, so it's going to create another event, 
and say on the event of click, whoops, hate that when it jumps around like that. Copy that, put it back in there. Okay, on the event of clicking, the value is going to be a function and we will open and close a set of parentheses and open and close a set of curly brackets right there. And I'm going to do another jQuery tag right there. And we will say text box dot show, open and close, and end it with a semicolon. So I'm going to say when this gets clicked, actually show it. All right, so I've got that guy right there. I'm going to close that out with a semicolon. I'm going to do the same thing for hide. So I can just kind of copy and paste this bad boy. Oops, paste. And I'm going to change out show with hide and say on click still, the function. I'm going to target my text box down there. Actually, I already made a mistake right there. I'm going to add that pound sign in there. So I'm actually targeting the text box. And I'm going to say hide. All right, so very simple. Again, when the document starts, when it's ready, make show on a click event, create a function that says show this guy, and on hide, hide him. Make sense? Good. All right, save it. Let's come back to our browser up here and let's see what happens. I'm gonna hit refresh, click to show. There's my copy. Click on click to hide, and it hides the copy. Very cool, very practical use for JavaScript and jQuery and just a tiny little bit of CSS there. Hopefully you enjoyed that one. I like that one a lot. All right, so let's take a look at doing a hover effect using jQuery. Not too far off from everything else we've done so far, but a little bit different here, so I'm going to go ahead and break it down for you. Start out the same way we have with everything else. We start with our document. We say one that's ready, create a function here. And within that function, we are going to, as always, start with our dollar sign and open it up with a pair of parentheses. And within there, we're going to target a class this time. Just to kind of change it up a little bit here. And I'll say text copy, I don't know, make up whatever you want there. It's just a CSS class. So we'll say text copy. And then what we're going to do is on a hover state. So on hover dot hover right there, we're going to target now um, something that we're going to create a um, kind of a variable for. We're going to call this one highlight copy. All right, so we'll create this kind of object here, this highlight copy, and I'm going to go ahead and close it out a semicolon like we normally do. And I'm going to create a function now that's going to make this whole thing work. And we will say on this function, this highlight copy, so I'm going to copy that, paste it. Highlight copy, open and close parens, open and close curly brackets. And within that function there of highlight copy, what are we going to do? We're going to do something a little bit different here. We're going to use the dollar sign. And within a pair of parentheses, instead of putting quotes, we're not going to put quotes this time. We're just going to say this. Okay, we're going to target this, a very specific thing. And we will do toggle class. Now that is something specific to jQuery here. So I'm going to say just toggle class. And we are going to open and close a set of parentheses and open a set of quote marks there. And we will say highlight. Now what that class is, or that is a class that we're going to create within our CSS down here. I'm going to say the toggle to this class now. Toggle to it, change to it, um, use it basically. I'm going to go ahead and close it out with a semicolon there. Very simple. Uh, in fact, I can remove some of this room here so you can see everything all together. Whoops, delete that. So again, document starts when it's ready. Go ahead and target this anything with this class within the body of the document here. And on hover, we're going to do this highlight copy. So we created the function of highlight copy. And we said, whatever that is, toggle to the class, the CSS class of highlight. So I'm going to come on down here. We can get rid of text box this time. That was an old class. And we will say highlight. Open and close that bad boy. And make sure this is a class and not an ID because we said uh, this is a class up here. So highlight. And um, I don't know, let's do something kind of cool here. We'll say text 
shadow. So we'll kind of create a little drop shadow for the text here when someone highlights or mouses over it. And we'll say colon, um, one pixel to the bottom, one pixel to the right. And we'll give it a shadow of, I'll uh, just do it for real light gray, CCC, CCC. It's a nice light gray one there. Uh, make sure I got six there. Okay, cool. So highlight a text shadow here. Now I've got this ID here that was from a previous area. Um, that still kind of works here because we're not, we don't need to worry about this. Um, but we do need to give this paragraph here something very specific. So I could say this paragraph, oh, always opens and closes the wrong area. I'm going to cut that out. In fact, I'm just going to do this just for the first kind of like sentence area up here. So just to kind of show you the difference. So we open that paragraph tag. We'll open new paragraph tag here. We'll cut that guy out and we'll close this one out. So again, just to kind of show you the difference here, I'm going to add just this one class of, what did I create? Uh, highlight right there. It's a class of highlight. Now it's not going to actually apply that to it just yet. What that's going to do is only apply it when I hover over it, if it works right. So I'm going to go ahead and save my document and I'm going to come back and, oops, I'm going to go ahead and save my document as hover. Save that into my files there and I'm going to come back and I'm going to find hover, drag that onto a browser window here. So now And of course that didn't work, so it looks like I got, oh yeah, what am I doing? I'm actually applying that class down there. So what that should be is, should be only when you say text copy. All right, so I'm gonna put that right in there. I'm gonna save that and come back and hit refresh. All right, so now that drop shadow went away on that, but if I mouse over it, you can kind of see that little drop shadow going on over there. Uh, you know, let's make that a little bit different. Uh, the, the text shadow is kind of cool, but just for this case, Background. Oops. Let's make that a background of red when you mouse over it instead. So save that, come on back, hit refresh. Now nothing's happening to this bottom paragraph because I did not target that with the right class, but this one I did target with the jQuery class, and as I mouse over it, you can see that it highlights there. Some really cool things you can do with a mouse over using jQuery. Very simple code here. Um, Go through this again. If you don't understand it, it should be very simple. We're just targeting this highlight class whenever somebody hovers over it uh, and this class is applied to it. All right, so let's take a look at something else that's really cool called fading, where I can actually make the text or an object fade as a mouse over it and then fade back in as a mouse away or whatever I want to do, something like that. It is kind of like a filter, almost like a video filter kind of thing that's built into jQuery that we can target certain items with. And we're going to go ahead and take a look at that now. So I created a new document and I just called it, uh, called it fading up here. I'm using the same intro that I always use within my jQuery code of document.ready. So whenever the document is ready, we can apply the function and the code that we are going to apply here. So I've got a bunch of room here, nothing else going on in it. Let's go ahead and start it out. Guess how we start it out? As we always do with jQuery, we do a dollar sign right there. And I'm going to open up a parenthesis and add the quotes right there. And I'm going to target an ID this time. And I'm going to say fade in. So when I, when I target this, I want the object to fade in. And how do I want it to happen? On, I'm doing an event here, on, click and add the function of how that's going to work. So say open and close parentheses, open and close curly brackets right there. And within there, we will say, oops, we will say with that, uh, what did I name my area down here? Text box, the ID of text box. So pound text box. So I'm going to target this text box area down here and I will say fade in. And you can see it's already coming up here as a jQuery option. So say fade in. Now what I have the option to do is say how quickly do I want it to fade in. 
And everything's done with uh, in jQuery and really with most code is done in milliseconds. So I'm going to type in, um, I'll say 3,000, which is actually three seconds, 3,000 milliseconds. And I will say, again, function, open and close parentheses right there, open and close a curly, whoops, a curly bracket, give it a couple of returns there. And I want to give, um, just so I know that it's done, I'm going to say, I'm going to create an alert. That's a little pop-up box. It's going to come up and give me a message. And in that, I want to say, I'm done. So I know that it's all done fading in. You don't have to do that. Um, it's just kind of a nice little thing we're going to use to show that it's actually done fading. Um, again, so I've created this ID area of fade in and on click create a function that says anything within text box. I want to fade in over a duration of three seconds. I'm going to create another function within there that says alert when I am done. All right, so I've created the fade in option. I uh, do need to do two things here. I opened up these two, but I need to close those out with our semicolon there and there. And I'm going to do the fade out part now, which is going to be very similar to what I just did above. Um, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and just copy that bad guy and hit a couple of returns down here. So instead of fade in, obviously we'll use a new one, a uh, new ID called fade out. And again, on click, we create a function here and we'll still target the text box, the same area. And instead of fading in this time, we're going to fade out. Be careful you don't change that. If you don't change that, it's going to not really work right. So um, what I can do instead of giving uh, an actual duration of milliseconds, I can cre uh, use a kind of predefined thing called, uh, let me say, fast or slow. It's kind of like with uh, CSS where you can target a color by saying like red or black as opposed to using a hexadecimal. There are some pre-built ones up here. And I will, again, use my additional function here and create another alert that says I'm done fading out. In fact, I'll do this one. I'm done fading in. Just so we know the difference up there and down there. Now let's make sure the rest of our document is set up. We have the jQuery is all set up here to fade in and fade out. I'm going to come down here. Those are still closed out properly. That's good. And I'm going to, within my style here, I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to target the text box down here. And I'm going to just copy that just so I don't screw up mm, typing that one up there. So I'll say target the ID of text box. Open and close him, and I will say display none to begin with. Do not display anything. So now let's go and come down to our document down here and make sure that we have all this set up properly. So we've got a uh, text area down here. This doesn't really matter. That's some old code. Um, two paragraph tags, so anything within this text box here, that is what's going to fade in and out. It's gonna start out displaying as none. So what I need to do is create those little triggers that we need to click on the events to turn this, fade this in and fade this out. So I'm gonna create a link and it doesn't need to actually go anywhere. So I'm gonna just use the little pound sign, but I do need to give it the proper ID. Proper ID is going to be fade in. Make sure you spell that correctly. If you used camel case or use the dash or however you did that, make sure it's spelled exactly the same as you did above. And I'm going to go ahead and close out that. And I'm just going to add a little space right. Oops. Didn't want to put that there. I'm going to create a new one. In fact, I'll just copy this guy to save a little bit of typing here. And I'll put a separator in there just to kind of separate them. Say fade out. But there's actually nothing in here right now. So to close that out properly. So I'm going to say fade in. That's going to be my text that I click on to make this fade in. And again, I'm going to unscrew up that code right there. And I'll say fade out. All right, so now everything looks properly typed up here. href, fade in, fade out. So those are my IDs. I'm going to fade in and out this text box here. Fingers crossed. Let's go ahead and take a look. Um, again, I call this document fading. I'm going to save that. And come back to my browser up here, find my fading document, and drop that in. Okay, so, so far it looks correct. Um, the text is not displaying, so that's correct. Now I'll say fade in. 
and looks like over about three seconds, that text faded in. I got my alert that says, I'm done fading in. Hit OK. Now I'm going to click on fade out. You can see that faded out really fast. It didn't do the three seconds like I did with the fade in. I got the alert here. It says, I'm all done fading out. Click OK. So really cool stuff you can do with not just hiding and showing, but actually fading in at all different rates. Definitely play around with some of the different options up here with the fast or playing around with the milliseconds on how fast that fades in and out. Uh, a lot of cool options you can do there. So something cool that you can do with jQuery is sliding the text up and down, kind of like hiding it and revealing it basically, but in more of a sliding fashion as opposed to a fading in and out or anything like that. So what we're going to do is basically just like all the other jQuery I've ever shown you before, we're going to start out within our basic document ready function area right up here. And we're going to come down here and start out with our jQuery dollar sign and open with a parentheses and quote marks there. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a area that's going to be clickable that will allow you to slide up the kind of like the hider area. So it'll make more sense when you can actually see it. But within there, we're going to create the ID of slide up. All right. So one thing that is given the ID of slide up is clicked. We're going to create a function for it. And so I got my open and closing parentheses there, open and closing curly brackets there. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and just close that one out because I seem to always forget to do that. And then within slide up, within the function of slide up, what we're going to do is another dollar sign. And we're going to say, let's see, what's my text area called? Text box. You see, I've got that ID of text box right there. If I don't just copy that just so I'm not messing anything up here. So we're going to target that ID of text box. And what we're going to do is make it dot slide, oops, slide up with a capital U, slide up. And we're going to set a pair of parentheses there and we're going to target how we want it to slide up fast slow give it a couple of uh, uh, seconds to you know the duration for it to slide up over and we can say um, I don't know not make it take too long we'll say two seconds which is 2,000 milliseconds there and then how do we actually want it to slide do we want it to slide up down what we're going to do here is linear so have it come up and I line and I'm going to close that out right there with a semicolon. All right, so now we have to do basically the same thing to make it slide back down. You don't want your text to slide up and then just disappear forever. So I'm going to create another one, another button that we will give the ID of, uh, I can't type, uh, slide down. And same thing here, we're going to add a click on click and give it a function of, and we're going to target the text box. And in this case, we're just going to say slide down and we can give it the same duration right there. Or we could say something like, ah, I can't type, fast. Oops, if we do fast, we need to start over here. If we did something like fast, we would need to put that in uh, quotes there. And we still want to do this as a linear uh, sliding effect here. Uh, but you know what, I'm going to stick with 2000 just to kind of have it equal on up and down there. So very simple. Now the last thing that I want to do is I want to create one more. And this one I'm going to say, um, actually, whoops, I'm going to target it, a new ID. I'm just going to call it toggle slide. And on that I'm going to say dot click. So again, on click. And we will create just like we've done in the past. Function. Open and close that guy right there. Open and close a curly bracket. And then within the function of toggle slide right there, what we're going to do is we're going to do actually the same thing we just did up here. So let's go ahead and copy that. We're going to target the text box and we will say slide toggle. And we'll stick with 2000 and instead of linear there, 
we will still have it be a comma, but we're going to say, we're going to put a function in there this time, just to kind of mix things up a little bit here. Open and close that, and this time we're going to put an alert box. You don't have to do this. We'll put a little alert block box in there, and that it will simply say done, so we know that it's all done um, with the toggle slide effect. So let's make sure that we close that out properly there with a semicolon. We have this which we need to ba -ba -bum. so we got that down there so we still need to close out oops that with a semicolon and that oops with a semicolon as well I think I think I think we are all set there so let's come on down here we're not really worried about any kind of styling for this one so I'm going to get rid of that style which was from a previous project and we are going to have our buttons here which uh, in the past I had used a fading effect I showed that in a previous video what we're going to do this time is we will do slide up just kind of like fade in and we'll give it the text of slide up so we know that that's what the uh, thing is that we're doing here's the ID slide up again pound slide up same thing got a little break here we will do slide down which was done the same way and we'll say slide down and we got one more that we want to put in there this was our toggle so I'll show you what that is here in a second and that one was toggle slide I believe Don't know why I did that one. So I'll just call that toggle. All right, so everything else looks in place here. I've got my ID of text box. So that's what it should be sliding up and down, hiding and revealing that those two paragraphs right there. I should have three text buttons in here that will all be triggered by these three functions that I created within my jQuery. I'm going to save that as slide. I'm going to come back to my document and put slide onto the browser window here. All right, let's see. Okay. So I've got slide up, slide down, and toggle here. So I'm going to say slide up. If I click on that, you can see that my text just slid up. Slide down reveals the text again. And toggle gives me a alert box here that says all done. Toggle also opens and closes. So I could just have one button here as opposed to having two separate buttons. So that's the difference between the two. Slide up, slide down, maybe used for something. But for the most part, a lot of times people just use like a toggle where this could be a graphic as opposed to just the text there. And you have the one button that will open and close your text. All right, in a previous video, I showed how to do some of the hiding and showing a sliding of text. And one of the things we did was a toggle. Now, we didn't really get too far into how that toggle works, or some of the different options are for that. So I just want to explore toggle just a little bit more here real quick. So within my document, I've got my standard starting jQuery line up there. Uh, what I want to do is do what I always do, start with the dollar sign and the parentheses and the quote, and I'm going to say toggle me, oops, toggle me, there we go. So I've created the string within there of toggle me, and what I want to do is on click, I want to explore some different ideas or different things that I can do with that. So within there I'm going to say a function open and close the parentheses, open and close a curly bracket, and within toggle me, when somebody clicks it, we're gonna create a function that's going to say, actually we'll target our text box, and we will say, give it the property of toggle, and within there we can say how fast we want it to happen, say within four seconds, and how do we want it to toggle. Um, in this case, let's try, um, let's try a swing, or we can try something kind of fun like that. So say swing, and then uh, let's see, we've got the closing tag right there, or the closing curly bracket, the closing parenthesis. Just need to make sure we have that closing semicolon in there. So this should be about what your document looks like now. All right, so toggle me, click, 
add a function that says make the text box toggle at a speed of four seconds and swing. And again, toggling is one button that will allow it to both open and close the text or whatever it is that you're trying to hide and uh, reveal here. So I'm going to come down here and say toggle me was the name of the ID that I created for this one. I'm going to still just keep toggle as that uh, text box is what I'm hiding and showing up here, which is what I added right there. So let's go ahead and save that document. I'm going to come back to my files and find toggle and drop that into a browser. All right, so I've got all this text. I've got toggle. All right, so that's not working. Let's see here. What did I do? What did I do? ID equals text. ID equals toggle me. Ah, right there. Toggle me did not have the pound sign before it. I'm going to save that now. Come on back to my document. Hit refresh. Now when I click on toggle, you can see that, that that is the swing option within jQuery. So if I click it again, you will see that the text kind of swings out and fades at the same time. All right, so since my favorite thing to do with jQuery is animation, I want to go through a couple different animation options here um, that you can kind of pick up from, and hopefully once you kind of understand the basics of it, you can apply it to all different things and do all different things with it. Um, it just There's so many doors that this can open up. I'm just going to go through a couple different options here before we move on. So let's start out a new document. What I'm going to do is four different things. I want to create a button that says Grow, one that says Move, one that says bigger, and one that says many things. We're gonna do four different things with these very basic animation options here. So within our script at the top here, opens up the same it always does. I'm gonna create a new JavaScript or jQuery option up here with the dollar sign. Uh, open parens, open quotes, and I'm gonna say, the first one I'm gonna target is the first guy down here, and that's gonna be an ID of grow, keep it simple. In fact, I'll go ahead and put it in there right now. ID equals grow. Okay, so within grow here, we're going to do a event handler. So we're going to say on click, do something. I'm going to do a function. And within that function there, we're going to open and close the set of parens and open set of curly brackets. And here within that function is, we're going to create a new jQuery option here. And I'll say dollar sign parens I'm going to choose here, say text box, which we're going to target this text box area down here, the ID. I'm going to make sure I put that pound sign in there. So text box, and what we're going to do is we're going to animate it. So now this is a jQuery option. So we'll say animate. And what we do with that, we're going to do a kind of like a function. We're going to open the parens, open up the curly brackets. In fact, I'm not going to hit return. I just want to kind of keep it all in one line here. Uh, so within those curly brackets, it'll be a little bit easier to see if I do it this way. Within there, I want to provide all the parameters they want for the animation, and we're going to be kind of basically using CSS here. It's going to look slightly different, but it's going to look very similar at the same time. So animate, I'm going to say open and close curly brackets here, just like it would with kind of like with the uh, style sheet, is I'm going to say the width, I'm going to make this one grow, so say change the width to, I don't know, 500 pixels wide. Actually, the, that is the one difference right there is that with jQuery, you need to put that in quotes there. And then I can still say how, what the duration is um, of how fast or slow I want this to work. So I can say over the course of two seconds or 2,000 milliseconds. Uh, but I did make one error right there. I want to change that right now. So after the quote, you kind of end, you close that curly bracket right there because that's the end of our style. So after that curly bracket, let's say comma, give it the duration and the number, and I'm going to go ahead and close that guy out right there. So that is all that you need for the very first one here. And I'm going to add a closing um, semicolon right there. So this actually should work right now, although I haven't really added a style sheet to style how this is. So let's go ahead and add the style right now. I'm going to kind of create just a text box so that it's a defined box size and not just some you know huge goes full width kind of thing where we're never going to see it actually grow. So what I'm going to do is target my box down in here. I can see I've got the ID of text box. So I'm going to copy that within my style area right here. I'll say text box and I'm going to say open and close curly bracket. 
Now I can just simply give it a, oops, I gotta spell it right, width of, I'll say 200 pixels, keep it simple, height of 200 pixels, um, just so we can actually see it. Let's give it a background color of, just a real light gray there, and um, you know, let's give it an absolute position. So let's say position, and we'll also say margin top. Just kind of gives off my buttons a little bit there. We'll say I don't know, like 20 pixels. Keep it simple. All right, so let's go ahead and test that one out real quick. I'm going to save this document. I'm going to open up animation in my browser here. So here's my box, all gray with the text in it. Now if I click on grow, you see that that box just kind of grew wide and expanded right there. So let's go ahead and do the other three real quick here. We can say move, bigger, and many things. These are all basically the same as grow. We're just going to apply some different styles to them, and you'll see what I'm talking about here. So now that I've got that, I'm just going to copy that, and in the interest of time, just go ahead and paste that bad guy in right here. Now I created another button called move. So let's go ahead and give it an ID of move. And I can change this one to move. And I'm going to keep all the same stuff right here, except instead of width, I'm going to say margin left. Now it looks kind of like CSS, except that would normally not be camel case, and there would be a dash in there, but very similar. Um, I'm going to say move left, uh, just move it 200 pixels to the left, and do that over the course of one second. So I'm going to copy that, or I'm going to save that, come back to my document. It should be good to move. So you can see that the guy just moved over there a little bit. Nice easing and everything. It's all built into the jQuery. Now let's go ahead and copy that one again. And what did I call the third one here? I call the third one bigger. So let's go ahead and give it an ID of bigger. I'm going to say bigger there. Same function, same click function, same targeting the text box again. We're going to animate it again. Um, instead of moving it, we're going to say, let's make the font size not 200 pixels, definitely not. Say 40 pixels, and we'll do that over the course of three seconds. So let's save that, come on back to our browser, hit refresh, click on bigger, and there's my text just expanding out. The box was fixed to a fixed size right there. Um, so the text had to kind of go beyond it, so not much you can do about that. But now I can still move everything over, and I can make the text box grow. That kind of um, helped the text fit better within there. So those are a couple different things. Now you can see that it did kind of ease. Uh, there was some nice, smooth motion to it. Again, it's all part of jQuery. Uh, let's go ahead and do one more before we wrap this one up. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to do, let's see, what did I call this one? Many things. So let's go ahead and just give it an ID of many. I'll come back up here, the ID of many. Now, just to kind of show you that we can do all sorts of things within here, um, I can say font size of 400. I can also give it a comma and say margin, oops, keep thinking CSS there, margin left of 400 pixels, and a comma, we can say, I don't know, width, um, what should I do there, 600 pixels, ooh, crazy, and we do that over a course of two seconds right there, so maybe this is a brand new one that's used just on its own, again, we're targeting many, let's save that, come on back, let's hit refresh, and many things should do all those things all at once there. So it is sliding it over, making the text larger. And what was the other thing I had to do? Change the width, margin left, and the font size. So it did all those things in one. So a lot of cool things you can do with the animation uh, function within jQuery. So we've taken a look at a whole bunch of cool animation and cool things you can do with jQuery. Before we go any further, let's go ahead and make sure that we have a good understanding of selectors. Because that's such a key thing within jQuery, let's talk more about these selectors and what we do with them. 
So what I've got here is just a regular paragraph and I've got a class of text right there. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to create a couple different versions of it. I'm going to go ahead and clean up my formatting there. All right, so what I want to do is I want to create a couple different um, selectors within my jQuery here at the top. So as we start everything out, as always, I'm going to do one that is just for the P tag, the paragraph tag. And what I want to do is, because I want to select that and define that with some CSS, I'm going to use the option of .css right there as part of jQuery. And now I can apply any kind of style that I want to with it, but it's just written a little bit differently than you would normal CSS. But think along those same lines. I'm going to say open quotes. I'm going to say border for this one. After the uh, quote mark, I'm going to hit a comma. And I'll do a new quote. So it's kind of like saying border, colon, you know, if you're using CSS. But instead, I'm doing a comma with quotes surrounding the two. I'm going to give the actual value to what this border is. So I'll say like a one pixel uh, red dotted border. I'll make that three, just so you can see it. All right, I'm going to close it out with a semicolon right there. And that's going to give anything that is a paragraph that option. So I can do it again, and I'll create a new class, basically. Print that down. New class. And I'll say this time I'm going to do a um, ID area. So I'll say, oh, I don't like that one. It does it. Header. Top. I don't know. Maybe it's just something like that. And uh, it's just like above. I'm going to do that CSS. And I can give this one a little bit different. Let's go ahead and use the same basic option just for kind of speed here. So say border of one pixel blue solid line. Just so we're kind of comparing apples to apples here. And let's do one more. And this time, in fact, like, let's go ahead and just copy this whole thing so we're not retyping it. This time we're going to do a class and we'll say dot uh, green border. Did I do that right? Nope. Green border, CSS, I'll do another border right there, and this one will be a two pixel green, and let's do a dashed. All right, so now I can kind of target each of these paragraphs down here with what I just created up here. So of course I've got the paragraph tag right there, which will attach to anything. Let's say this paragraph um, ID equals header top is what I created up there looks like yes okay ID and then this one was a class and that will be green green borders now if I save my document and I bring that into what was this one selectors two bring it into a browser so you can see that I'm able to select each one of those paragraphs separately through either a class, an ID, or just the regular paragraph tag. And just because it has a paragraph tag, these other ones will overwrite it because they are just the way that the hierarchy goes and with the fact that they've had a ID or class added to it. So hopefully you understand selectors. If not, go back and check out the first video that we did. If not, go ahead and back, check out the first video that we did on selectors. Um, I'll be doing an advanced class here shortly, so make sure you do understand this before we move on. Because a lot of what jQuery does works pretty much hand in hand with CSS, I want to go through filters with jQuery. And it's going to be very similar to the selectors. We just need to um, target the specific areas within a document. So let's go ahead and check this out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have these three paragraphs. In fact, let's go ahead and create a fourth one too. Let's just copy that first paragraph right there. Let's get rid of these two. So let's say two, three, four. So we've got four paragraphs. This will be a little bit easier to understand if you have an even amount here. And what we can do with the filters is we can say a little bit more specifically how the 
um, styles get applied to the text within the document here. Now you can do this with CSS, um, but it's also nice to be able to do it with jQuery. It's kind of easy to do on the fly. Um, it prevents it from overwriting everything else in your document. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look what that is now. So the way I would target this is I'm going to create kind of one big container. So say a div ID of, I don't know, just call it container. And let's go ahead and have that surrounding these four paragraphs here. So put my closing tag right there at the bottom. So everything within here is called a container or is part of the container ID. Now what I need to do is up here, let's go ahead and, uh, actually let's just go ahead and get rid of that one. So I'm going to say container. And what I can do is within that container, I can say the first paragraph maybe. And I can give it a CSS of this border right here. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. All I've done is say anything within this idea of a container here and the, it should have been a colon, not a semicolon. So within the paragraph tag, the first paragraph tag that you see give this border of a one pixel blue solid border. So let's I'm going to save this as filters part two. All right, so I'll find that file here. I'm going to drag it onto a browser. And you can see that even though all these other paragraphs are within this container tag here, only the first one is being targeted right there. So that's kind of the nice thing about filters. Um, another thing you could do is we looked at first. Now let's go ahead and look at last. I can say save, come back. Hit refresh. Now I'm just targeting just the last paragraph tag. Now I could have 50 paragraphs. It's only going to target the last one. Now the reason I did four of them here is because you can do other things too. Um, this is very pos um A lot of times you use this in something kind of like a spreadsheet where every other row might have a different background color. So let's go ahead and do that. So we can say even. So every even paragraph may have a... Oops background of of gray. So let's go ahead and save that and see what that looks like and I hit refresh there. So every even paragraph here is going to have the background of gray. And I could also say odd. So there you go. Now remember with programming languages, um, zero is actually the first number. So it's kind of, kind of opposite of what you may think here uh, as far as what's being given that background color there. But it's a very cool way that you can target and filter out different things using CSS and jQuery. So there's still a little bit more to know about selectors. I'm going to go through some advanced stuff here. Now this is not like super advanced, but it's definitely taking it to the next step. So you need to make sure that you understand your CSS, and this is going to go hand in hand with that. So what I've done is laid out a basic document here where I've got two paragraph tags. I've got paragraph, paragraph. Then I started a just a very basic div container here. There's no class or anything applied to it, just a very basic div container. And within there, there are four paragraph tags. And I created one with a class of para, or fourth, para, fourth paragraph. Then I close that div tag. Now I've got some an unordered list here with a bunch of different list items. And another div with an ID of box and some other stuff down here, just so we can see the difference in some of these advanced selectors. So make a lot more sense once you can actually see it displayed in a browser. So within our top of our JavaScript up here, jQuery. We've got our top that always starts out the same as it always does. And I want to show you first, let's go ahead and do a dollar sign. And quote. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to say anything that is within the div tag and you use the greater than symbol, the div tag is kind of the parent of the paragraph tag. So don't just apply whatever style I'm going to do to just a paragraph tag here. It has to be contained within a parent item of div. So I've got that and I continue on saying we're going to apply some CSS to it. 
And within there, I'm going to just go ahead and just make this uh, something that's obvious like we've done in the past. Give it a class uh, type of a border, or give it a style of a border. And I will say, let's go ahead and make this a uh, two pixel solid blue. And let's go ahead and close that out. All right, so I'm going to save this document, and we're going to take a look at what it's going to do. Now, it should, because it's saying anything that is a paragraph with a parent of div, it's going to give that border to it. So these two should not show up with a border around them, but these paragraph tags should. So let's save that. Let's come on back to our document. I'm going to hit refresh, and there you can see, because those first two paragraph tags were not in a div tag, was not a parent of, these paragraph tags were a parent of the div tag, so they get the blue border to them. And it's not applying anything to these unordered lists here because there's nothing going on with that. Those are not paragraph tags, those are unordered lists. All right, so that is the first of the advanced selectors here. I'm gonna go ahead and, you know, I'm just gonna comment that out so we can kind of come back to it or you can still see it if you wanted to. Now what I'm gonna do is kind of the same thing. So I'm gonna copy that, I'm gonna paste it down into here. And what I can say is anything that is a parent of the div that is a paragraph tag and is given the class of fourth paragraph. So I created one that was the class down here of fourth paragraph. We give the border of two pixel solid blue. So now when I save that one and I refresh, you should see just this one class being given that blue border. All right, so hopefully that makes sense so far. We're dealing with parents and then children, basically, here, of um, anything within the div tag. Now, if I had another paragraph tag with that fourth para class added to it, it would not show up if it was, did not have, was not surrounded by a div tag. All right, so let's go ahead and comment that one out, and let's come on down and do another one here. And this time, what we're going to say is we're going to go ahead and add a... Down here you can see I've got this ID of box. So this time I'm going to say anything that's part of the ID of box, gosh, box, and give it the plus there, and is an unordered list, let's go ahead and give it that border. So again, we're dealing with kind of parent children, or here we're using saying that is part of an ID and is an unordered list. So I save that, come back and hit refresh. You can see that this unordered list was not touched because it was not part of that box ID, but this one was. So let's go back and take a look at the code real quick here. You can see my first unordered list was not part of any kind of ID, but the one below it here, div ID of box, did have an unordered list within it. So you can see, again, the power of jQuery and how it works really hand-in-hand -hand with CSS and some of the advanced selector things you can do with it. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at some advanced filters here using jQuery. So right now I've got a just a very basic script going on here. Everything has been the same. I'm still linking to my jQuery file here. I still start out with my document ready function. And in here I've just go ahead and went ahead and set up a basic line right here. That's saying we're going to add some CSS with a border, one pixel solid red to whatever I want to do. So here's where I want to put in some different filters. And here's also where we need to make sure that you have a good understanding of your CSS. Uh, just because this will be getting into some more or relating to some more of the advanced CSS functions, but we're going to be accessing it through jQuery. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first one. We all we worked with the p tag before, but we can also add in the p and a colon, and we can say something like first child. Now if I spelled that right, it would work. First child. That's going to say the first paragraph tag here. The first child is going to give it this border of one pixel red. So let's go ahead and save that. I'm going to grab my files here and find filters 3. So this is the first child of the paragraph tag, which is all of that. Now what I could also do is say last of type. 
That's going to select the last paragraph of the type of selectors or uh, paragraphs that I have down in the body here. So if I hit refresh, now we're selecting just the last of its type. So there could be 50 different paragraphs here. It's only selecting the last of its type, of the paragraph types. <clears throat> So we could also do, and this one's kind of cool, where it could actually help you in searching for something on the page. Maybe a lot of web pages are not going to be just little four paragraphs of uh, one or two sentences here. You may have hundreds and hundreds of sentences or hundreds of paragraphs or whatever it is, and this could be throughout the entire site, not just one page. But what you could do is you could say P, paragraph tag, contains and then open up uh, parentheses, open up a single quote, and in between those two single quotes, I can put a word that I'm looking for. So let's say it was maybe lorem. Yeah, let's go ahead and make sure this is... All right, so I can see I've got lorem in my paragraph here. So it's gonna be looking for that word somewhere within my document. So I'm gonna go ahead and save, come back and hit refresh up here. All right, looks like I got contains. Got to be able to spell that right. Come back to my document. Okay, so every paragraph, every paragraph that contains the word lorem, I'm going to give this border to. So it's kind of an easy way to find something specific. Now let's say we went ahead and in the third paragraph said jQuery. So let's change this word up here to jQuery. And I save that. Now I come back to my document, hit refresh. You can see it's just highlighting the one paragraph that has the word jQuery in it. So again, it can be a very easy way to do, uh, to kind of create a visual search function for you within your document. Uh, one of the last ones I want to take a look at here, go ahead and get rid of that. We're gonna stick with the paragraph uh, tag right now, and we'll say parent. The parent, now nah, you know what, let's go, yeah, all right, we can do that, we can start with that. So we can say the parent paragraph, which we'll save and come back here. Now it's going to select each of these because each of these is actually a parent of itself. So there's really no children of this. Uh, just showing you that that is something you can do. That is something within CSS that you could do. Uh, but another one you could do, this is more the one I was thinking of as the nth child. And we can say which one of the child. We can save that and come back here. You can see it's now selecting the third paragraph. So saying the third paragraph or the third paragraph within the paragraphs here that within my document, the third one we're gonna give that border to. So again, understanding these filters within jQuery is gonna be very helpful in doing a lot of things uh, within your document, uh, finding things, highlighting things, or just accessing things on the fly. All right, in this jQuery lesson, what we're going to be doing is creating copy on our web page. We're going to be inserting it through jQuery and all this kind of stuff uh, we've done before. If you don't remember, go back through some of my old videos uh, concerning the jQuery and how to do this stuff. But I just want to speed this one up a little bit so you're not just watching me type the whole time. What I've done is created a document and we have our basic uh, jQuery that we always link to, the basic opening document ready function, which we always use. Down in my body area here, within the body of the page, I've created three links. One that says create, one that says create text, one that says create text, but with different IDs. The, these IDs is what we will be targeting from the jQuery. i got create, create text, and create variable. So all that I have down here uh, targeting these three paragraphs is what we'll be using, and all within the ID of container. All right, so again, to kind of speed this up a little bit here, I've got those already set up in there, and within the document, area of my jQuery. I'm going to go ahead and paste in the first code that I pre-wrote. And again, this is all stuff we've done before, so if you don't remember, check out some of my other jQuery videos that we've gone through. And so what we're doing, as you can see, we've got create text. That is going to be what we're going to be targeting as an ID down here. So I got create text. And we're going to setting up a click function, so it's an event here, so that when somebody clicks on it, we're going to target the container, the container ID right here, and the paragraph of last, which is going to be the last paragraph within here, and we're going to replace it with this text right here. So again, uh, we've done this in previous videos. If you have any uh, 
issues remembering some of that stuff. Go back through those, but this should be nothing new. That's why I'm going through a little bit faster here. I'm going to save this document as just create. I'm going to save it. I'm going to go find it here. And I'm going to open it up in my browser. And I can say, click on create text. And you can see that that third paragraph just got replaced down there. So that third paragraph right there was just created. Um, now it's got those paragraph tags around it because it is using, it's actually taking everything that's in these quote marks right here and placing it in there. So if I delete those and save it and come back and refresh and click on create text, you can see it just replaced just that text right there. So that may be useful for something like a form where once you've submitted it, it's replacing some text that says, you know, thank you for submitting this form or something like that. Uh, there are uses for that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the other one that we have set up down there. All right, so I'll copy that code, and I'm just going to go ahead and replace that paragraph that I had in there before. Now, it should be very similar to what we saw before, but this time we're using a variable. So this way we're setting up our jQuery create variable. So this will be the third button down here that I have. And we're setting up another event that says on click, create this function. We're going to create this variable of new text. And within the container, the first paragraph is what we are going to be targeting. And the container last with HTML new text right there. So I've got that in there. And what I'm going to do is just so we can see what we've got here, I'm going to go ahead and just number these paragraphs. Call them number one, number two, and number three. Now I'm not actually replacing copy. I'm actually getting rid of it by doing this this way. So if I save this, I'm going to come back to my document, hit refresh. And I can see I've got uh, paragraphs one, two, and three. And now if I click on create text three, or the third button there, we've just removed three, the number th uh, third paragraph. So I'm targeting this P last paragraph there. So if you can kind of see the benefits of creating and removing text through jQuery, it's got a lot of different options, uh, a lot of different uses for it. So it's just applying that to your document, how you see fit to use it. All right, so we've taken a look at some different things you can do with jQuery. We've removed copy, we've kind of changed copy, we've slid copy over, moved it, and done things like that. Here I actually want to insert copy, and I'm actually a little bit different way to do it than maybe we had looked at in a previous video. Um, so here's a different way to do it. So I've got my, in my body area here, I've got just an ID container, and I've got three paragraphs here, just numbered one, two, and three, just so we can see them a little bit easier. Uh, we're going to do all of this through just the jQuery up here. So in my uh, typical script, again, starting with document ready function, we're going to uh, go in and first we're going to, well, let's go ahead and create a couple buttons first because we want to insert the copy. Uh, we want to do that through a button as opposed to just letting the jQuery just do it. We actually want to uh, have it be a kind of a click event. So I'll say, hey, href equals... I'll just use the regular pound sign, as we always do. And I give it an ID of, oops, append. And let's go ahead and call it append. And we'll close that out. Oops, oops, oops. All right, so we'll call that one append. And what we can also do is prepend it. So let's say a href equals, and the pound sign, and we'll say id equals prepend. Actually, it's the two p's, I think. All right, and close that out. Pre. Okay. So I've got those two buttons there, and what they're going to do is, when I click on them, they're going to target the area within the body document there. Uh, so let's go ahead and start writing this out. We'll start this out as we always do with the dollar sign. And we'll say, within a pair of quotes there, we're going to target the, the append. All right, it's nothing too crazy going on here. Just targeting the append right there to the ID down here. <clears throat> and this is going to be an event, a click event. So when I click on it, what's going to happen? We're going to create a function. And within that function, Close that out. Uh, so within that function there, we will do, let's target the first paragraph and we'll say dollar sign P 
first. So definitely want to make sure we know our filters and our CSS, how we work all that. So we're going to say the first paragraph, we're going to target that one, and we'll, we're going to append it with just, um, uh, just, I just appended some copy. All right, so let's go ahead and close that out with a semicolon. We got that closed out properly. Cool. So that's looking good. So let's go ahead and just copy that, and we're going to do kind of a similar thing for the prepend. And instead of that, all right, so I'm just going to change the name of that. Still going to do a click function. We're still going to change the first paragraph. And again, we'll just say prepend as opposed to append. Prepended some copy. Oh, looks like I got a spelling error there. So compy, that doesn't make sense. All right, so what should happen is I should append and prepend this copy right here uh, by using those two buttons that I have down in my body. So let's go ahead and save that. I've just created a new document called insert. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look how that works. Uh, insert. All right, so I dropped that on my document here. And if I click on append, again, we've got one, two, and three. So you should see what's going on. So append this over here real quick. This is actually supposed to be spelled P-R-E-P-E-N-D as opposed to with the two P's. So I'm going to change it everywhere here real quick if you don't mind bearing with me. Just want to make sure that's done right. Can't remember how that was spelled. All right, so that is should be correct. So now the append was going to go to the end of the first paragraph. It's going to append it to the end. Whereas prepend should be adding it to the beginning of the first paragraph right here. So I'm going to go ahead and save my document, come back to here, hit refresh, and if I hit append, you can see I just appended some copy. If I hit prepend, you can see I just prepended some copy right before the one right there. So it as you can see, because you hopefully understand everything we've done up until this point and some of the other videos that we've taken a look at the filters where we could append or prepend this to different paragraphs within our body and we can do all sorts of different things using these CSS selectors here. So hopefully that, hopefully that helps you out in some of your future projects. There's a lot of applications for it, just finding the right thing for you. All right, so something cool you can do with jQuery is you can modify existing copy that you have on your page. And you can do that using the uh, targeting with CSS. And what we're going to do is take a look at how you do that here. So what I've done so far, I just have our three basic paragraphs that we've used in previous videos. And I've wrapped it with a container of ID. So as of right now, if I were to save that and go to my documents here. All right, so we've just got three paragraphs of just basic black copy. Nothing special going on here. So what I want to do is within the head of my document, I want to create a style that I want to modify uh, using the jQuery. So let's go ahead and call this, um, I don't know, color box. And we will create a, um, I'll just change the color to, um, I don't know, make it blue, make that kind of cool blue right there. Okay, cool. All right, so we're going to say anything that gets this color box applied to it here, we are going to change the color to blue. Now, it's not actually being targeted down here. I don't have that class set up on any of these paragraph tags or within the ID here right now, so it's not being applied just yet. But we're going to use the jQuery to do that for us. So up in here, and this is very simple, we're going to create a function uh, using the dollar sign. We will say... Uh, let's see, we're going to target our ID down here of container. So we'll say hashtag container, and we're going to target the paragraph tag within there. And we're going to use a new function called wrap, and it's going to wrap itself, whatever it is, around the container paragraph tag here. So say wrap, and then open and close parens, and we will say with uh, quotation marks, and we're going to start to type out some CSS. We're going to say we're going to wrap this with a div tag, id, I'm um, so actually it's class equals, and we're going to use single quotes here because we're already kind of wrapped in double quotes. So we have to use single quotes this time, otherwise it closes that out. And we're going to say color box. Is that what I named it? Yeah, color box. 
All right, so now I just need to close out that. Got that. Uh, close that out with a semicolon right there. And what it should do, again, taking all the paragraph tags within the container here, it should wrap them with this div class of color box, changing my font to this cool blue color. And I'm gonna save that and come back to my document and just hit refresh. And you can see that it went ahead and modified all that copy right up in there. So what you can also do is you can now is I could also target um, specific paragraphs within here. I could say first, and we could um, refresh there, and now I'm just targeting just the first one to modify that. Uh, you could also do a different function here. Uh, let's see, we can do empty, and just keep an open and close paren right there. So you have too many closing parens right there, so let's close out of that one. All right, cool, so save that. And now the, just the first paragraph should come up empty. So if I hit refresh, you can see I've lost number one. Now I just have two and three right there. Again, good way to kind of clear out just one paragraph or you know a specific area. This could be for testing. This could be for maybe just on mobile devices. It'll turn off certain paragraphs, things like that. It could be useful for. So another one that you can do is we're gonna modify this just slightly, kind of almost like write it in reverse uh, from what we had just a minute ago here. Uh, still starting out with that. Let's go ahead and remove this. Let's keep those uh, quote marks there. But we can say uh, div we can say we're just going to replace this with the word container in here. And what we're going to do is we are going to replace all of anything with in the uh, ID of container container. I'm going to close that out. So basically, saying uh, this will be replaced all of within the container ID. So save that. Come back over here, and you can see my paragraphs have been replaced with just a div tag. But if I inspect it, you can see here being replaced, which is a div tag of container. Well, that's what I can take a look at here. So we can kind of reverse this out here. We can just remove that and place that in there. I'm going to switch this one around here. So I'm going to say the container we want to replace with, so it's just a different function, replace all with replace with, and we will say, oops, oh, still put it in the wrong spot there. Okay. Between the quotes there, I'm just going to replace with, um, you know, I'll even write something different. Um, this has been replaced with. So anything within the container there, replace it with this div tag here. We can save it, come back and refresh. And you can see that this has been replaced with. Uh, and close out the inspector there. So this can be very useful for, again, all different things, maybe switching things out on mobile devices, uh, certain tags. It could be used for testing purposes, um, all, the, all different reasons, but a lot of cool, powerful things you can do with this jQuery function. All right, so this is kind of a fun one. We're going to go through. Uh, we're going to be modifying copy with existing CSS class. So what I've done so far is just kept our you know, same basic. If you've been through the other videos, uh, same basic, just a couple paragraphs here so we can see things being targeted within an ID of container. But what I did do this time is I've added four buttons or just text links up here uh, where we're going to add a class. We will remove a class. We will toggle a class, which will be turning on and off just by using the one button as opposed to having to use two. And we're also going to increase a class. So you're going to see what those are, but I'm going to do all that through CSS and adding it through the JavaScript or the jQuery JavaScript. So what I do have that is up here is my style, and I'm going to target it through something called color box. Actually, I'm just going to make it color. I just want to keep this short and simple so I don't screw up any typing here. Um, so the style I've created of color, uh, you can just pick whatever color you want here, and that's just going to change the font color. And up here, I've got my jQuery link, and within here, I've got the JavaScript or the jQuery script that we're going to start writing. And we're going to start with the very first one that we have down here of add class. So in fact, I will go ahead and copy that. And we will do is we start with every jQuery. We're going to start with the dollar sign. 
I'll open and close parens, I'm going to close quotes, I'm going to say hashtag add class. But the first one that we do is we're going to target that button with an event, and that event is going to be a click. So on click, create a function, and that function, we're going to open and close with parens and curly brackets right there. I'm going to go ahead and close that out so I don't forget that. So what's going to happen when somebody clicks on the add class? We are going to, using the dollar sign, we're going to say, we're going to change the, oops, let's go ahead and add uh, quotes there, uh, the paragraph tag, and we're going to just target the first paragraph. So again, if you're not familiar with this, still not catching on to this yet, go back and watch some of the other videos where we're doing the filtering or just brush up on your CSS, because it's the same thing. We're going to target just the first paragraph here, and what we're going to do is we're going to add a function called uh, add class. So I know that's kind of the name that I named this right here. That's not the same. This is an actual jQuery function where we can add a class, a CSS class, and what we can do is we can pick from all of our different classes. Now most web pages are going to have hundreds and hundreds of different classes all set up in their document. Uh, so you need to make sure that you are targeting the correct one. What we'll do is open and close uh, parens, but this time we're just going to use single quotes and we will say color. So we are targeting that color class, so add class. Right there. And I'm going to hit that, uh, close that out, and what we can do is we can now go ahead and just copy and paste this little function that we created right here, and I'm going to say remove class. Okay, so now we're targeting the remove class. Make sure I get that spelled right. And remove dash class, a lowercase for my second button. Remove class. So again, it'll be another click function or a click event. Uh, the function will be here. We're going to target that first paragraph again. So we can actually see that class being removed from here. And instead of add class, we will say remove class. So very similar to our button here again, or our ID for the button. And we will say still, we're going to remove this color class. So maybe within this, maybe there was one um, class that was like color that added just the color to it. Maybe you want to remove a class where you can actually target a different one that was removing the color and changing the font size or something like that. So you could target different CSS classes here. We're going to keep this simple and just target the same one. And uh, I'm going to paste again this first one that I had here. We're going to target the third button of toggle class. So change that to toggle class up there. It's another click function. As you go there, we're still going to target that first paragraph again. And if you can guess, it's going to be toggle class, the other function that's part of jQuery right here where we can tar tog toggle on and off the uh, style that we've created here. Again, we only have the one, so we're just going to keep targeting this one for right now. The very last one that we want to do is we are going to do the increase size. What did I call that one? Increase class. So I'm going to say target the increase class here. And this will be another click function, and we're going to target that first paragraph again. And instead of targeting um, the style that we've done down here, I just want to target CSS. And this is kind of a cool one, a little bit different than anything I've shown in the previous videos here, um, although very similar. We will say within the parentheses there, we're going to open up a set of quotes, and we will say font size. And remember, we keep that in the quotes there. That is the, the value that we are, excuse me, that is the, um, the file. <laughs> that is what we're targeting through CSS right there is the word font size. And we do a comma. We'll open up another set of quotes right there. And what we will do is we will add, now this is kind of a little bit of programming right here. There is a plus equals one pixel. So it's going to add one pixel every time I click on it. So I can keep on increasing the size of this. And I can also create a decrease class uh, option where it said minus equals one pixel. So it'll decrease the size of the font. So somebody could maybe um, increase or decrease the size of the font on the website. That could be very, very helpful. Definitely something I've seen in the past. Good UI, good UX. All right. So let's go ahead and save this. Hopefully I don't have any errors. I'm not seeing anything going up in here right now. And actually I need to be... Saving this one as, let's call this one CSS Modify. I'll save that in my jQuery document. And let's go ahead and come on back and find CSS Modify. All right, so we've got the three paragraphs. Only the first one should be targeted here. So I'll say Add Class. So now I've added that blue 
color to my first paragraph. Remove should get rid of it, so we go back to the black. So I'm no longer applying that class to this document. Toggle class should allow me to turn black, blue, black, blue, black, blue, just by clicking on the one button here. And increase should allow me to keep on clicking it and increasing the size of it. A lot of great things you can do by targeting these CSS classes by using add class, remove class, and toggle class all through your jQuery document. So I hope you've enjoyed these classes uh, on jQuery. There is so much to learn about jQuery. What I would definitely recommend is making sure to be able to take full advantage of it is to learn a little bit more about JavaScript itself, is to keep playing with jQuery and learning all the other things that you can do with it. We've just started kind of touching on some of the main things that you can do and some of the things that you're probably going to want to use over and over on a more regular basis. Um, just depends on what you plan on doing with it. Um, also brush up on CSS and HTML. Make sure that you are as proficient as possible with that because you can see uh, in some of the classes that we were doing there that there were a lot of um, advanced functionality through targeting the CSS advanced functions, um, targeting your HTML. Always make sure that you're up to date on all of that and so many different directions you can go with it. So those are the things that I would recommend as next steps with it. Uh, as far as everything that we've gone through, I am providing all the documents that I worked on for you to download here as reference. So definitely take a look at that. If you get stuck on anything, download that file, take a look at what I did. You know, one little character could make or break your document and keep it from working or give you really crazy results. So, so if you get hung up on anything, take a look at those documents and I wish you all the best in your jQuery career.